that in this show, we will announce the finalists uh, for all of these NBA awards. I have a question. They'll be handed out June 25th. Yeah, 25th. Uh, so rookie have, of the year. You'll have the finalists for MVP, Rookie of the Year. Do you hear Ben Simmons or do you hear Sixth Mitchell. Man Award, Most Improved and Coach Mitchell. of the Year? So we will we Mitch will Simmons. run all of those down, and you'll get the three finalists in each category uh, as we go on tonight. What do you hear, Mitch Simmons? <laughs> Mitch Simmons. <laughs> all right. Um, Let's talk about the game now. In fact, you've heard enough from us for right now. Let's uh, check in with uh, one of our sideline reporters for this one, Kristen Ledlow. Kristen, which which one did you hear? Did you hear Laurel or did you hear Yanni? I heard Laurel this yeah, okay. time okay, when you were playing it over and over. And I guess I'm responsible for this smooth transition. And yes. since it was a blowout loss in game one, despite the criticism for the Rockets' game plan, neither Coach D'Antoni nor his team seems to want to strike from the system that won 65 games this season. We actually just sat down with Coach D'Antoni moments ago and he said, we're playing exactly the way we have to play, but we just have to play better. We didn't play well enough to beat the champs. He and his stars addressed the media yesterday, and guys, they seem to be on the same page. You watch them, I and what's the best way that we can play this team with this talent? This is the best way. It was, you know, we won 65 games, and there was nothing to disprove it all year, so why wouldn't we play this way? And I think this is the best. Uh, James is one, one of the best, if not the best ever one-on-one -on -one player. Dude, that's what we've been doing all year long. Uh, we went literally two months, and I think maybe lost a game or two by doing what we do, you know, so it won't change. We just got to do it better. They cause different matchup issues, as do we. They did what they do better for longer than we did. I think there's a reason why they probably won a championship last year. You know what I mean? I'm sure if you go to any statistics, the team that usually wins probably has the least amount of mistakes. Warriors coach Steve Kerr agreed with that sentiment, saying that you're not going to change who you are in the playoffs. You're going to be who you are, but you have to be better. And is somebody messing with me? Somebody's saying donut now. Somebody is saying donut next to the set. <laughs> okay, guys, take it away. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kristen. Thanks for playing our game. Um, so you heard Mike D'Antoni. You heard Chris Paul. You heard James Harden. You heard through Kristen from Steve Kerr that even though you have been saying, look, you gotta, you got to do something uncomfortable at this stage. It's like, it's, it's unanimous on the Houston side. Look, this is what got us to 67 wins, and, and we're not going to change. During those 67 wins, they're playing the Atlanta Hawks, the Orlando Magic, the Sacramento Kings. They're playing the team that's been to the final three years in a world row. That will work against the Magic, the Hawks, and the Sacramento Kings. Go ahead, Kenny. I think it's... They, first of all, they have the personnel to be adaptable. They do have the personnel to be adaptable because they can, what I would say is that you could, instead of running pick and roll, you can penetrate and pitch and still create one-on-one -on -one opportunities. But you can't be stubborn to the point. We'll see tonight because he might be fool's goaling us and saying, I'm not doing anything different than do things different so Steve won't be prepared. But when we're playing Shaquille O'Neal in, in, in the NBA Finals, if we don't double team, and because we don't, typically we say Dream can handle everyone one-on-one, -on -one, and we decide not to double team Shaquille O'Neal, we don't win that series. We have to double team now, do something uncomfortable, and everyone has to roll. When we played John Stockton on the pick and roll with Malone, Robert Horry had to come from the weak side uncomfortable, something we've never done, because that's the only way. This is a great basketball team. This isn't those teams that you yeah. mentioned. You're going to have to Go tweak ahead and you're going to have to unscrew and tighten all at the same time. A lot of people listen, but they don't understand. I'm not saying changing the system. Obviously, exactly. we, we know what we're talking about. We're saying, if you look at the history of the game, Kenny know this, you will not win a championship unless everybody is involved. Michael Jordan, when he first came in, tried all that one-on-one -on -one crap, it don't work. Golden State Warriors are great because everybody is involved touching the ball. You can't hold the ball one guy 15 times in the game, 22 seconds out of shot clock, and expect the others to be ready. If you look at all the greatest shots in, in the uh, history of the game, it's by the others. Steve Kerr was the other. You know, when he told Michael Jordan, Mike, you pass you the ball, I'll be ready. Right here, it's too late in the shot clock for him to do anything. He's not going to be ready right there. So you got to keep the guys involved. We are superstars sometimes, and sometimes we have to use what we have, Ernie, to get people involved. Like James, 
can get to the basket every time. So every now and then, he should get to the basket, draw the defense, and kick to his guys. Cold Skates using five guys, Houston Rockets using two. In a fight, five on two, five guys will always beat two guys. And let me say a couple things, Ernie. The one thing I like to see the Rockets do, look, they're trying to make a play with two seconds to go on the shot clock. The others ain't gonna be ready. Yeah, then, first of all, I don't wanna even put that type of pressure on James. I, if the, I would attack early in the shot clock, that's the first change I would make. And secondly, I try to get my others involved, because if you look at all those plays, Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson, and Steph Curry, what are they doing? Resting. They get to rest half the game, Ernie. And the one thing that the Warriors do, they put Chris Paul and James Harden, they made them play defense every trip down the court. But if you're gonna let those three guys rest, just stand in the corner the whole game, they're gonna have more energy for offense. But also, James Harden got tired that night. He might not admit it because he has to work so hard, but go early in the shot clock, and then I would try to make Kevin Durant play defense. And you know, I, I want to say one word, sacrifice. When you're a superstar, you got to sacrifice for the others, and the others have to sacrifice for the superstar, period. If you don't have to sacrifice they have the in ability, your game, you won't win. And they have the talent to do it. You know what, one thing that this made me think about as you were talking about, hey, you got to change things up and be uncomfortable. Going back 11 years, playoffs in 2007, Golden State, number eight seed, takes on Dallas, the number yeah. one seed under Avery Johnson. Avery Johnson changes his lineup to match up with the smaller Golden State. And you said, there's no way on earth that a number one seed should change anything against the number eight seed, Golden I, State. I, I, but now I, you're bro, saying Houston no, 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 has no, a chance no, 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 what they do no, different. No, it's a that, different that's, scenario. That's, uh, it's totally different. Totally. Well, you're talking about changing up for an eight seed or changing up for the greatest team possibly in, in this modern era. This Golden State Warrior team is the greatest team in the modern era that has been assembled. So yes, you can't do the same things against them but that you can do but against how, the Milwaukee Bucks. But aren't you asking a lot to take a team no, that's done no, everything the same way no, no, all Ernie, year Ernie, to Ernie, get Ernie, here? Ernie, if you want to be great, change the way you're doing Ernie, things, before, but hold on, That's but, all I'm asking. No, oh, Ernie, before this series, I said, before the series, I said, it's a lot to ask for James Harden and Chris Paul to play one-on-one -on -one and have to guard Steph and Clay. First, first of all, that's impossible. I've been in the NBA for 30 years. I've never seen one guy have to get 35 a night and guard the best guards in the NBA. All I'm asking the Rock to do is don't run down the shot clock every time. Don't play. Don't be out there curling, nil, dribbling, 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 and then hack up a shot with two seconds to go. I got another. Do that 20, 30 times. Move. Okay. You can't right. do that. Well, we got we got to move on because, and and we'll have more time later to maybe to talk, but we do have to get to the awards because. Okay. Because we're talking rookie of the year, and we're looking at the last six winners, starting with Kyrie to Dame to Michael Carter Williams, Andrew Wiggins, Cat and Malcolm Brogdon of the Milwaukee Bucks a year ago. So here are the nominees for Kia Rookie of the Year in 2018. So ooh. this will be announced on June 25th right at the, there. And that, and at the no, NBA Awards. And there's no wrong answer. Out of all, all three of them. There's no wrong ooh. answer. And well, again, you had the playoffs too. But dude. you're reminded this is a regular, regular season award. Yeah, does regular not, season uh, does not include it, it, right it, right it slid my guy, not my guy, but our guy, Tatum down regular season. But if you put the body of work of the playoffs and what he's done, yeah, then no, it's, yeah. it's it, it would yeah. be up for grabs. There's no wrong answer in that question. Who would you go with? I would go with uh, Donovan Mitchell for the simple fact, I actually think it's a huge advantage when you red shirt. I know they, they, they do it work, they don't count that, but I think being a red shirt gave Ben Simmons a huge advantage from a physical standpoint, but the best pair rookie was Donovan Mitchell. I went with Ben Simmons, 16 points, eight rebounds, eight assists, shot 55%, had 12 triple doubles on the year. I thought Mitchell had a great year as, as a, and helping the Utah Jazz do what they did with 21 points tonight. 
I'm going to go with Ben Simmons also. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, I didn't hear about him until late. I don't know if I wasn't paying attention. I don't know if it's because he played in Utah. You were a little, little late to the party on that one. He was, well, no, you know, they had a bat first day. Yeah, yeah they, they got off to a bat. Oh, but but yeah, the, reason I, hear about the, the reason I voted, uh, what, I, I didn't give a vote. Uh, ben Simmons is going to win probably. But the reason I gave it to Donovan Mitchell, number one, no, there's not a single person, not even in Utah, thought the, uh, the Jazz were going to make the playoffs. Right. And for a rookie to come in and assume the leadership role to be the best player, uh, that that's a big deal. So there you see the numbers on Ben Simmons and again uh, Monday June 25th will be out there in L.A. for the NBA awards and that hardware will be handed out Ernie to the top rookie. Yes. Are you the same announcer that all three of us are here or the same way we got you still were great before we got here but you adapted didn't you. Adapted to our uh, I'm trying to find your